War within Drew and Talents are... <sighs> meh. Well, meh, doesn't really say much, but overall the mark seems to have been missed. And it's a shame because we all know we secretly want to be a bear cat owl tree and hide our transmogs. Some people not even secretly enough. So how are the hero talents in their first iteration and why will you maybe be dis disappointed? Uh, well, let's take a look at first the Druid of the Claw one, which overall thematically maybe it's the best one out of all the talent trees so far and still it has some issues but wild shape mastery is essentially the most interesting choice because it just gives you exactly what the theme would expect you to expect from it and that's actually pretty cool but it feels like it's just almost not quite there feral essentially gains more options when it needs to shift to bear for defensive purposes while bear potentially gains dps at the cost of tankiness which is a problem as far as feral is concerned having to go into bear for tanky is not necessarily a bad thing or utility hopefully that can be tuned with utility but right now it seems like it's supposed to increase the damage that mangle does and the rage that you generate which i essentially don't really want to be in bear for a prolonged amount of time and if this would be a playstyle choice that we're gonna have or might not be a choice at all because we're gonna have it we need to figure out exactly how to deal with the shape-shifting cost because you have to spend globals to be able to get into the specific shapeshift form which is not a particular fun thing to do in WoW. We've been through that before whenever cooldowns were taken off the GCD and it took Blizzard about three to four years and two expansions to be able to make cooldowns actually give you something when you press them or put them off the GCD as well. We know that for Ascendance, for Shaman, for instance, whenever you press it, you just gain a burst of healing for Resto, for example, right? And if we just shift into Bear, wait for the GCD, hit our ability, wait for the GCD, hit Cat's form again, and then go into our DPS, then that is just a lot of downtime that, first of all, doesn't really fit for Cat playstyle because Cat is very fast. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Guilty has pointed out as well in his review of the talent trees, Cat GCD is about one second long, while Bear GCD is 1.5 seconds, so they're essentially different globals. Will we have the same globals regardless, just tied to the spec itself? Because that will also impact the flow of your rotation. As far as Bear is concerned, and this talent is an example, but we have multiple hero talents within the Druid of the Claw that incentivizes you as a bear going into cat form. This is a different thing because normally bears would only go into cat form if they are off tanks in a raid and they want to do more damage, which hasn't necessarily been the case in the last couple of raids to my knowledge since bear damage as a guardian druid was better than cat damage as a guardian druid but in past expansions you would actually shift into cat to deal a lot more damage and being able to go into cat to deal more damage as an off tank that's first of all really cool and it makes sense for cat to do more damage now the way that the talent the whole hero talent system works essentially makes you think that you want to go into cat while you're actually tanking as well because apparently you're also going to retain 80 percent of your armor which is not very clearly specified, but I believe this might also apply to the armor from Ironfur. And although Ironfur also persists into cat form with certain talents, we're not sure exactly to what extent this happens. First of all, at any point in time, a tank doesn't really want to give up tankiness. That's very rarely an ideal thing to do for damage. And you have some examples, for instance, like Prot Warrior with defensive and battle stance, which they had to severely buff defensive stance so that you wouldn't feel that bad for going into defensive stance as a pro warrior where now you only lose 5% of your damage while in defensive stance whereas before it was like 10 maybe 15% uh, by staying in uh, defensive stance and now battle stance and kind of you don't really want to have the same situation reversed where if you go into cat form you just risk you're at a risk of dying because part of the reason why bear is a problematic tank to play in difficult content where tankiness is important is that you don't really have a lot to deal with magic damage and one of your biggest defensives that thematically is part of your spec being your hp is tied to your mastery which has been a very bad stat for bears ever since legion so if you don't even have the amount of hp that you're supposed to have or more hp as a bear going into cat could essentially kill you or whenever this would be a valid way to deal more damage by just shifting into cat would probably be in lower content than what you're probably going to be doing anyway making it a little bit redundant as well so 
I don't know exactly how this can be fixed. I mean, obviously, we can just make it so that you don't lose any tankiness, but you can only be in cat form for like four, five, six seconds most, and then start dropping your armor or HP or anything like that. That could be one way of doing it. The shift weaving is not properly incentivized for the theme of the tree, so I'm not sh sure how we're supposed to feel about it because first of all, this is the first inception, right? And we know from uh, the way that they're perceiving feedback that with Oracle at the very least, they are very, very open to changing things. Because in the end, the way I look at this tree, Feral should be able to actually do damage as a bear if you're incentivized to go into bear and actually retain some damage. If we're also going to be keeping the global punishment or the global price of going into bear by spending those GCDs to shapeshift around. Because if it's uh, if it's just utility or just defensives for cats, then a big part of this tree is essentially lost. Since once again, unless you're doing content where you have to use your bear form consistently to be able to survive stuff, which is already a problem if that's how DPSs are going to face incoming damage, then just tankiness is just gonna fall flat in terms of play and how you feel as a cat. Since now you don't really want to be in bear almost at all and the rare chances you want to be in bear are very, very, very rare. One bigger issue that the talent tree has, and I know a lot of people was ho were hoping for this, I kind of was hoping for this as well, is, is essentially the potential to have both Feral and Bear have a reason to be invited into groups, which is something that we've been talking for a long time, because Druid sure has Mark of the Wild, which is great, but Druid also is a unique class that has four specs that it needs to contend with, and particularly Feral always had to contend with Balance. If you want a Mark of the Wild, you're likely going to get a Balance before Feral most of the time. A little bit not the case in a Mirdrasil where you wanted Feral over Balance a little bit, but this is, has been a niche experience and that had mostly to do with the fact that Feral was probably more akin to do big boss damage than Balance was, but that's, that hasn't happened almost at all in the last couple of raid tiers and where you systematically wanted Balance over Feral. But Bear has seen even less play in Endgame on, unless it's just over par because a weird tier set just gives it giga, giga stats. You don't really have a utility reason to bring any of these two particular specs. And one thing that they could have had is a Roar akin to the Warcraft 3 style uh, Druid of the Claw unit that you had to play with where you can buff other people. It's or even leader of the pack that we used to have, which people keep bringing up every, every time we ever talk about Feral bringing a buff to a group. I think the devs were intending to get this with Pax Endurance, but Pax Endurance just makes Stampeding Roar last 25% longer. I've been playing Druid and I've been maining all Druid specs and I have been Mythic raiding and have taken advantage of Stampeding Roar during mechanics. The one time that this sounded really well was probably Sanctum of... I'm, I'm sure you can make use of Stampeding Roar a lot of the times, but the one time where it was really necessary and we really wanted a Druid was probably Painsmith progression or uh, Soul Render progression back in Sanctum of Domination where you wanted as many as many group movement buffs as possible, so you either had Shamans with Windrush or Druids with Stampeding Roar. None of those situations would benefit from 25% extra duration on Stampeding Roar. There is no mechanic that would take advantage of a longer duration sprint for your entire raid, because if there was such a mechanic, that would make Druids 100% mandatory and this talent tree would always be picked. If longer duration speed would be ideal. There's, you don't move for that amount of time within a raid because that would be a bad way to play the game if you didn't, if you weren't able to do your damage or your rotation for six, seven, eight, ten seconds. I don't know how long this would end up with. I'm always fuzzy on the duration of Stampeding Roar. So uh, fundamentally, the talent doesn't really provide actual benefits and it definitely doesn't hit the mark of giving Feral and Bear a, like a group-wide buff in terms of a roar that can give them a reason to be invited. And we can go to Alun's Chosen now, which is probably, in terms of actual power, maybe the best one designed. Thematically, it's whatever. It's Alun's Chosen. It's part of the Druid fantasy where it just, you know, it can attuned to the moon. 
but there's still too many passive damage nodes that make the tree not really exciting at all, but this is not even the worst defender on this part. There are a few fun nodes, however, but they still feel flat compared to what other specs are getting within their talent tree, specs like, well, classes that are rather like Warrior or Death Knights or Mages even. Boundless Moonlight, though, to be fair, seems pretty cool for balance, because you just proc more moons in the natural part, and that's pretty cool, but for Bear, it's another story, and Bear just has this as a core issue with the entire talent tree, because it revolves around Bear playing Lunar Beam, which I don't necessarily have a problem with it, if anything, as a concept, I always found it really interesting, but Lunar Beam has been incredibly undertuned, to the point where you never picked it at any point in time, even when Bear in Dragonflight has gotten Giga Arcane damage buffers, you would still not pick Lunar Beam because it just underperformed all the other towns and it has never been buffed enough for it to matter. They've attempted a buff, it still wasn't played, they left it there and I'm not sure where this is going. Are we still going to see more Lunar Beam buffs to make it feel like an interesting talent or are we just going to be forced to play Druid the Claw as Bear because Lunar Beam is just incredibly underwhelming? Because if you are picking Lunar Beam, you're likely giving up a bunch of talents on the left hand side of the talent tree provided the talent tree does not get uh, reworked where you get like, you know, Ursox Fury. You might be able to pick Lunar Beam with Ursox Fury, but you'll also have some incarnation uh, buffers as well. So there are a lot of talents that kind of want you to go in the middle slash right side of the talent tree to, to buff your capstones and you just don't have enough points to go all the way to the left hand side because you might still want raise so how many more points are you going to be forced into to be able to make this talent efficient or to feel like you're actually playing so either lunar beam has to be giga buffed or the talent tree kind of reworked where lunar beam does not compete with actual play cells of bear that has seen it be at least moderately uh, effective at tanking. Having the choice note between Fury of Valoon and New Moon, which are already thematic capstones, was interesting so far for Balanced Druid uh, playing it in Dragonflight. So I'm a little bit confused and still not sold on being forced to use moons 100% of the time and never picking Fury of Valoon. Sure, there are a bunch of talents that proc Fury of Valoon, and that's great, I guess. It's also RNG and a little bit outside of your control, and it's already kind of iffy to have the orbital strike, I think, uh, also on a passive proc, because all of these procs generate an influx of astral power that you kind of have to keep track of. It's pretty hard to keep track of all these giga bursts of astral power <laughs> without using too many add-ons, so it can get a little, a little bit crowded here, that's all I'm saying. Astral Insight making Convoke better seems really cool for balance once again, but I still have questions for Bear. Will it proc Lunar Beam for Bear? Because I don't think it does now, and it does proc Moons for balance, and Moons are a core function of the Alun's chosen talent tree. It doesn't proc Fury of Alun though. So will this receive a similar treatment for Bear? Because you never picked Convoke as Bear, and it's very hard to pick Convoke as Bear when you have to sacrifice Incarnation and the benefits that Incarnation brings. Uh, having Convoke potentially proc Lunar Beam as well can make a big difference uh, whether or not you will actually play Convoke as a Bear or would it be just another dead talent for another expansion. Keeper of the Grove is also a weird thematic. Like Keeper of the Grove in terms of theme is kind of Druid. I mean, it is Druid. It's, you've, we've seen it in Warcraft 3. It kind of defined Druidism and it revolves around trees. And before we get to that, I do want to mention that Protective Growth is probably the best talent Druid gets in Hero Talents and absolute the best talent for Balance, period, which says a lot about the tankiness and survivability of Druid as a whole. This is really good. 8% damage reduction. Obviously, these are tuning knobs, so they might, well, they will change. I don't know if we're gonna get more or less uh, damage reduction, but this is really good. Now, the trend choice note for balance are not actual choices because you're always going to pick the one that gives you the most damage. But another talent choice note is between getting more damage or getting more utility. Either making the trees uh, not taunt and give you more damage or taunt, which that's just pure utility. And when a lot of the nodes kind of revolve around trees giving you benefits and giving you extra damage as a balance, it's a very, very, very thin line to thread while making a, a balanced player choose to pick particular nodes that would just sack its own damage because there's another kind of elephant in the room that we have to point out because whenever you have these types of 
mechanics, historically, the devs have balanced the specs around the options of damage. But as an example, if balance will be tuned, assuming you would be picking the choice nodes that give you damage, not picking the choice nodes of giving you damage will double shoot you in the foot and you will lose so much, which is similar to probably how we felt right now in Dragonflight with the legendary for strength classes where it felt like all of the strength classes were tuned around having the legendary and not having the legendary just made pretty much all the strength classes feel very bad. So this really matters when it comes down to, to it. If we're going to have to choose ever for in a world between damage and utility, we're always going to give up damage. We're always going to have more damage by picking damage clearly, but the spec has to be tuned in a way where if you, if you pick utility, you're not just doing tank level damage, which obviously is not going to happen from one choice node, but it is something to take into consideration. One of my personal biggest questions, and maybe I'm not the smartest balance druid and resto druid out there, but I am a player that plays druid and plays both of these specs and i have played a lot of druid and if i have these questions how would a new player feel about scenarius's might which seems to contradict the rotation of the specs and what you would like to build as healthy habits on balance for instance you almost never want to chain cast your spenders unless you're building your star lord from scratch since normally it's a rotational mistake and a kind of a dps loss Currently, now this might change in War Within, but there's no way to know unless you sim or watch a guide, which is a whole other issue in and of itself. Also, if the buff does not consume itself after the second or third casted spender, then you are likely incentivized to cast even more if possible. And does that mean that we're 100% going to have to take Astral Communion now, an, an extra talent that we're forced to take because that just works for the damage? While for Resto, we have to assume that casting any of these three spells, I think it's Wild Growth, Swift Mend, and Regrowth to get the stacks of the buff, casting any of these three specs work with each other to give you the stacks. And if you don't cast the same spell twice, you lose the buff, because otherwise it would just be a pain. Furthermore, Rejuvenation is just not included. Possibly not a big deal once again unless the buff does not reset or consume itself because it further incentivizes never casting rejuvenation to maintain the extra healing buff that you get from casting the other three spells and rejuve is also something that's not really used in the wild stalker talent tree at all which is a core part of restoration's identity as a healer sure it has other hots of course and the other hots are also strong although rejuvenation has been probably the the show stealer this expansion not having its core healing ability focused by any of the hero talents just puts a question on it and it definitely takes away from Resto's identity and trees although serve a fantasy them being uncontrollable just makes healing weird you don't really want rng tied to survivability and pets is an interesting design in wow and especially for these two specs having trees makes sense but pets in wow are viewed with mixed opinions and having a whole talent tree revolve around the performance of these pets these trees for specs that never functioned that way once again just feels a little bit weird maybe that's me and Wild Stalker is the last one that we're going to talk about and possibly maybe the most boring one. The concept is cool in and of itself and it could be a simple tree for new players that want to play Cat or Resto, particularly one of the harder specs of Druid to get into considering that they're not very intuitive. But it is boring and super passive. Five nodes at the very least are just passive number gains across the board and nothing about them will change anything that you do or how you feel about doing things. It's like gaining more eye levels from gear, and one of these five nodes is the capstone. The mechanic itself doesn't seem to interact with the specs very much to make you feel like you're actually getting hero, heroic level talents. In the end, all hero talent trees are a little bit underwhelming for druids, and especially for a druid fan wanting to be excited for the druid class in War Within, also someone who actually plays all four of the druid specs. I do have some superficial basic feedback coming from a player that has played Warcraft for over 25 years or more and has loved the druid class ever since Warcraft 3. Druid of the Claw. We need to have the roar from Warcraft 3 or at least something akin to it where you just buff people. 
that or a version of leader of the pack or that or a combination of both and i know guilty has pointed this out as well regarding feral and bear give i don't know stampeding roar more oomph to be the utility theme of the tree maybe you can make it remove roots and snares and provide avoidance as well because just having speed and longer duration speed most of the time is useless and having to spend a point for it that you cannot avoid will not feel that great overall the druid of the claw talent tree should make cats be tankier as bears and bears deal more damage as cats and that could be the system and not just half acid with only 80 percent of the power transfer or less even who cares if it's more than that you can just make it last predictably less so that it can just be a fantasy of it just shape-shifting but if it's just utility I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's fine if it's just utility, but it doesn't feel like that's where the talent tree is going or where people would wish it to go. For a loon's chosen as a balanced druid, I would like to receive a big payoff moment from the playcell rather than just minor moons hitting all the time, minor procs giving minor little dots and minor little astral power gains. We have a lot of these as balanced druids anyway, and that's cool and that's great but having more of what we have already is not really that interesting because some of the coolest moments that balance has going for it when you're playing the rotation are the moments when you get your pulsar are the moments when you get your orbital breaker and the moon slaps from the sky maybe more of that that would feel cool and would look cool and i can go on a limb but people might enjoy it more Bear is good with a lot of the talents that provide damage reduction and more arcane damage, which is great, but still it all revolves around Lunar Beam being good. And once again, Mastery, because I know there's a note that also increases Mastery. If we're going to have Mastery addressed at any point, which seems to be something that you would like for Druid of the Claw as well, then Mastery has to be looked at once again. I don't know if it needs to be buffed or it needs to be changed, but it's just weird and it hasn't been a stand that you've picked, I think, since Legion once again. And I would personally would love to play a fat bear with a big HP bar. Keeper of the Grove could have trends turn into a big cooldown obviously it's a personal opinion but it's hard to do away with the trees from this hero talent period so having them a part of the fantasy makes sense but increasing their uptime doesn't really seem to feel right for the specs they're just passive pets and it doesn't make sense for balance or rest though maybe maybe i'm wrong but having them be big impactful cooldowns feels cooler makes more oomph into the ability itself and makes actually having the trends out feel really really cool but obviously that would have to undergo massive changes across the board that way you don't have to micromanage pets and they can still be passive sources of damage and healing and can still work in towards simplifying the play style for new players while stalker just has a weird name maybe it's not that weird of a name for feral but it's kind of weird for resto unless you really want to be in cat form a lot of the time as resto and it seems like you do because you do get a lot of damage in your cat form abilities but it doesn't feel like it has anything to do with dots and hots and dots and hots being the theme between feral and resto hero talent tree is good that's like a hundred percent on on the mark on point because that that's their one common ground aspects of druid hots and dots at the end of the day the name can be whatever right it's just it just doesn't make sense but listen we can look past it because the problems are just overall no rotational and gameplay changes no impact i i cannot feel excited about being a wild stalker druid i don't know if this is supposed to make it more accessible for new players because it's less engaging it you have to think about it less in a sense because it doesn't alter that much you don't have to like do 5d chess so how would these talents affect my spec talents like none of that so maybe that's what they're going for which i guess that's fine but for everybody else it just feels boring maybe we can have more stealth procs because wild stalker it would make sense with the name maybe stealth regrowths can be giga strong and you know give rejuvenation something to do and work off of with stealth and not just damage maybe some rejuvenation synergy where rejuvenation ticks can proc stackable buffs that can be consumed on a rake or giga resto damage or rake ticks that can proc giga hot power for your feral regrowths and give you longer sustain as a cat and you know survival be longer or maybe these can all be tied to the vines and not regrowth and rejuvenation in the end 
possibilities are endless, but as it stands with all the hero talents for a big, big druid fan, they seem incredibly lackluster and seeing what other classes are getting just feels like a big waste because you can check what Death Knight is getting and compare it with the druid because we have a video on the writer of the apocalypse talents and see for yourself what the druid hero talents could be like if they have the proper oomph with the proper flavor as well.